Okay, so first of all, uh, very welcome everyone. And uh, we have a lot of uh, volunteers, a lot of participants who are planning to apply for this project. And uh, uh, it's really great sometimes to see that we have uh, like good number of people here in this meeting who really want to know and uh, understand what the project is. So uh, for uh, today's project, uh, we have uh, uh, UI migration and uh, we'll take a deep dive into uh, the UI migration and what I wanted to say and what uh, we can discuss with the problems that people might face during the uh, development and also uh, how we can start with the development, right? So my name is Vivek. I'm software engineer firmware at HP and uh, to know a little bit more about me, you can go to phosphor.com. Okay. So let's go ahead. Uh, so today our first agenda. OK, so agenda is uh, understanding the project. Basic problems with the project. OK, demo of Angular framework with Fasology. Uh, OK, so I have built this demo uh, based on my understanding of uh, Fasology. So you can also consider uh, something uh, similar architecture into the React as well, or if you are going to use any other framework if you're planning to use and please feel free to use any other framework. Uh, although this presentation is like a little bit more into Angular, OK, but that's something that you will also have the same thing in React as well. OK, uh, then we have understanding the connection between Fasology and a framework. OK, then we have a little bit more into details of Fasology API and we can end up with Q and A. Okay, so uh, let's start with project introduction. Uh, so project introduction. If we will start going through that, then we have the first point as Fasology UI. So the current UI of Fasology is based on Symfony Twig, and uh, uh, there are people in this uh, call who have already gone through the Fasology code base and have tried installing Fasology into their machine and uh, are exploring it out. So for them, uh, I think they are already aware and those who are not aware, like uh, our Fasology is based on Symfony Twig right now. And uh, uh, so let's go to point number two. We want to transform UI into new generation look. OK, so newer generation look like uh, the way we see like the newer model uh, tools and uh, websites, OK, like more of a animation oriented, more faster, more powerful, right? Then we have we are planning to use the technologies as bootstrap with React or Angular, whatever framework could be better. OK, uh, then we have OK. Uh, so today in this project, uh, like I basically have a demo based on Angular 11. OK, then the main focus is. Uh, is good and expandable code structure with below points. So our points are like code reusability, OK, uh, good architecture and highly diversified code. OK, uh, during this whole session, uh, we will try to take a deep dive into code reusability, uh, architecture, architecture and uh, code diversity. OK, uh, as that is what my demo suggests. Moving on to. Uh, next slide. OK, so let's uh, have an OK. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Just, I'm just sorry about it. Oh, you are Alexa is listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, so uh, let's understand about uh, our project. OK, so uh, I've made a simple slide with a little bit of animations to understand it. Uh, if at any point of time you guys don't get it, just let me know. You can stop me in the middle. Okay. So at first we have a UI which is uh, powerful and which is made out of framework like Angular or React. Then on the other side we have Fasology. Uh, the basic uh, structure that says here how we are going to communicate in between the UI and Fasology uh, is we are going to do through a HTTP call. OK, and uh, making it more precise. OK, 
for Solvi expose REST APIs, which can be used by uh, by our Angular or React uh, UI uh, to communicate. A little more precise, okay, what we are into, right? Uh, we will uh, try to more work with the Angular or React UI with the connection of REST APIs and codes and all these things, right? So uh, if it is UI migration project, we are less into Fasology, but more into Angular and the U APIs exposed by Fasology, okay? Okay, then, okay, so we have next topic as basic problems with the project. And the first problem that we see from the diagram itself is that our APIs are not ready, okay? And uh, that is the reason I've tried to focus over the APIs that we have currently now, okay? So one of the basic problem is APIs are not ready. Second one is cores are not configured, okay? And for the people who don't know about cores, so cores is cross origin requests uh, that needs to be handled uh, when we are sending any request to API. Uh, especially these modern applications which are trying to have HTTP call. Uh, they are like protected over a course layer and uh, uh, we want to keep uh, the course layer uh, like exposed to certain endpoints and uh, uh, all those things can be controlled under the course headers. Okay. Then we have APIs are not av available. This is one of the major uh, problem that you might have into our current project. Okay. Uh, then we have UI is currently written in Twig HTML conversion into conversion of UI into basic HTML is not that simple. Uh, but uh, all these are set based on the priorities. Okay. So since we are starting up with the project, uh, like as I have already gone through these problem statements and uh, I've tried fixing them. So first of the two, uh, first two problem statements are already fixed. Okay, uh, so there are APIs which are not ready. So now we made it ready. Okay, codes which are now configured. Okay, and uh, uh, there are some simple easy steps with which we can uh, do it, right? And uh, for the other two things, I think uh, these are the two things, major problems that we want to solve with this project. OK, uh, how we are going to resolve these two problems? Uh, let's take a deep dive into it since uh, we already know the structure of our application, right? So first few modifications could be like uh, uh, fixing up the course. OK, so uh, our course sends some of the uh, uh, tries to connect with the API before uh, your request goes. OK, so before your get or push request is uh, uh, sent to uh, the API, the course sends an options request, okay, which is uh, not available into the current uh, Fasology API. And this could be easily, very easily configured, okay, by adding the options into all of our APIs. So as you can see here in the example, like we are adding options, okay, in which we are uh, calling the auth controller class, which is uh, having a method like options verification, and then we send back them uh, the status code 200, which satisfies the condition of course, that is uh, the first push, uh, first request should be options request, okay? So uh, this is a very general uh, problem that you might have with any of the framework uh, that is based on node, like uh, so uh, even if you're working with React or like uh, Angular, uh, both have, in both the scenarios, you need to reconfigure uh, the APIs to have these options. And then let's go to the second uh, uh, second uh, step. Okay, so our second step is like uh, adding options verification to auth controller class. So since we have we are called trying to call this uh, auth controller class with options verification uh, method. Okay, we just add this uh, uh, method into our uh, auth controller class, okay? Uh, to know about more into this part of the API, I think uh, Gaurav uh, is going to help me with that at the end of the session, okay? So we have a dedicated part into this, like uh, with which we are going to know a little bit more about the APIs. 
Okay, then we have the third step. Now updating the REST auth middleware, okay, uh, that is invoke with the uh, options, okay? So we need to add like, uh, if there is any options response, we just need to uh, let the, allow the request to get completed. So whenever there is an invoke, uh, we just want to get it completed with the options, okay? So this is a piece of code that we are going to add it into the rest of middleware and inside the invoke method, and that will help us pass through the options request. Now, since we are all done and set with options, okay, the only thing that we want to configure are the headers of the course. Okay, so course headers can be easily configured into the sites available, that is for Solgy Conf. Okay, inside that we just need to add all these headers as uh, you can see in the image below. So uh, if you guys can see it, uh, like if, it's, uh, if it is visible, you can just, just take a look. Okay, and this is how it's going to be configured. Once all of this is done, like our first two steps are like uh, nearly completed and uh, uh, our uh, Fasology APIs are pretty ready to be used with any of the framework that wants to use it. Okay. Uh, okay. Regarding uh, the demo and uh, the uh, proof of concept, uh, I think we have already gone through this in detail once. But uh, we want to, let's take a look at it into a uh, little depth of it. So uh, I just have a little bit to show you all. Okay. So yes. So let us go through uh, for Solgi a little bit into this and. Uh, let us learn about the API if our API is configured as we have discussed. Okay. So first thing is index.php. We went there inside the API segment. Okay. And here all our APIs are configured with options. Uh, as you, can see, sorry. you haven't shared the screen. Yeah, we are seeing the slides only. Okay. Now is it visible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If you can. So if you can see, uh, this is an upload uh, API, and uh, this API is updated with options. And similarly, if you can see, users API is updated with options. And similarly, I'm, I'm doing it for all, just for the sake of uh, like showing you all. Okay. Uh, so all these APIs are now uh, updated with options. As we have discussed now, since options is using auth controller and class, and in there it's using options verification. Uh, let's go to our controller where we have auth controller, and uh, inside our auth controller class, you can see that uh, we have added options verification that will help us pass the verification. Okay, uh, as I've shown you in the steps, and the third step was to uh, fix the invoke a uh, method, right? So rest auth middleware, and there we have this invoke method where I have added request method, and that is allowing our options to go ahead with, uh, uh, with the implementation, okay? So options is the first thing that uh, course send before sending any other uh, request like get request or post request okay and we just we are just configuring our whole api system to like uh, pass on the options so that uh, uh, our uh, ui knows that uh, learns that uh, okay uh, now the connection can be made uh, okay and after that uh, let's take a little bit dive into the project okay once we are already set uh, so if we will take a dive into project, you can see here we are getting three users, okay, two, three, and four. Uh, let us try adding some user into Fasology, and if we will go here, we can try adding users. Okay, so let us add some user like a demo session. Okay, something like uh, testing or like learning. So that is what I will choose, and then we want password. So I think 
we can use the fossi password as only and let's click ok choose uh, invalid. invalid email address okay i'm very sorry okay so let's try here like big at boss let's add this user okay so user demo session added once we have added the session i think added the user i think we should be able to fetch it here so if we'll reload it yes we are able to fetch our uh, user here so uh this is the demo okay uh, we will take a more deep dive into uh, the code of this. OK, uh, let's take a look at the second phase of this demo. Uh, we have license. OK, so here what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to communicate with the license API and fetch some licenses. So if you will search some license like MIT, uh, we are going to get that license and all the information that I'm tabulating it here. Uh, what happens if uh, I'm putting some wrong name? OK, so let's try with some ABC and then we get this error pop up. OK, uh, so uh, this is our demo and uh, now let us take a look into the architecture of this. So. OK, so let us understand how we are going to use it. We use the existing REST APIs to communicate with the DB. So the two REST APIs that we are using is users and license as you can see here in the code as well. OK, let's go to. Our... So you can see here one of the license, uh, one of the API is license that we are using and uh, the other API is users that we are using. OK, now uh, to let's go back to our slide then. In this, we are performing two different API calls with Angular HTTP client module. OK, uh, something similar is what you're going to find uh, inside React. So in React, we have uh, HTTP client module, which is uh, working very similar to Angular's HTTP client module. And uh, in both the cases, we have the similar architecture. So the only thing that differs is uh, that uh, inside Angular, uh, we have it like pre given OK and uh, with react you might need to have like extra mapping uh, uh, support or like extra npm installed OK, but uh, that totally depends on you how you're going to map the data. Okay, So we expose this uh, in a common service which is shared by two different components. So this HTTP client module is exposed into a common service and uh, Similarly, we have different APIs to make calls to for different operations. You already know about that. Let us understand uh, uh, this part of uh, our uh, current demo. OK, so first we have test component. OK, then we have uh, test service. OK, with all the HTTP calls that are defined in the service. Then we have REST API, which is from Fasology. OK. Then we are communicating with Pathology through HTTP call. We are also subscribing from our test component to test service API inside the Angular app so that we should receive our component should receive the value. Uh, then we are trying to show all the user data using the card as you have already seen in the demo. So all this user. All these cards are like based on the number of data that we are receiving and we are looping through the same component and we are trying to display uh, this component multiple times. That is what we are trying to show here. Then we have license card, which is directly communicating with test API service and yet test API service is uh, easily uh, communicating with uh, the rest API through HTTP call. And uh, in meanwhile, you can also observe that we have a loading spinner which is uh, activated when these requests are take triggered. OK, uh, and until the requests are completed, these are activated. So this is the current uh, structure okay, that I have made. 
So let us uh, take at the look in the code with the same structure. OK, so if we will go down. I have this and Fosology UI, which is a separate project and uh, uh, inside this we have uh, first the Angular setup. OK, and uh, then we have uh, SRC inside which we have a real application and all the environments that we need to set. So first few things uh, that we need to set is the API URL because uh, this is the most important part of our application where we want to trigger it. Then uh, we have uh, our uh, components okay, inside the code. And uh, if we can take a look that we have an app component which is similar to the design that we had said telling that angular app. So this is our big component. And inside this we have different different components. OK, one of the component is like common tool, which is having loading spinner. OK, so a common tool is having just a bootstrap based loading spinner and uh, which is not having any implementation in its own class, but the implementation is given to the other classes as given in the structure. So loading spinner is given to test component and license card. OK, uh, let us go into the code and let's see how this happens. So this is our test component. OK, inside which we have user card and license card. OK, if you will go inside test component, it's like a simple bootstrap code and uh, which is just having a little bit of uh, uh, modification for uh, uh, like uh, angular directives okay which uh, we frequently use uh, okay now understanding the implementation of this code is like so once this test component loads okay we try to uh, start getting user so we call this method uh, ng on in it okay so this is being called by default from any uh, by angular okay and uh, this is the default behavior of TypeScript. So what we do here is that we call get users and then inside get users we have this uh, variable that is fetch data which is set to true. Now what happens if it is set to true? So if you will come to UI and we'll check. So here you can see that we have this fetch data and over which we have a directive saying if OK, which checks if this is true then just show this div right so when we load the application you can see that we are having a loading spinner so by the time it is true it will show this component okay and if it is false if it it will not show this component then we have uh, we are trying to uh, fetch some information from the api now how are we doing that we are trying to communicate with the test service okay so if you'll see into the architecture, we have this test API service which uh, with which we want to connect right from our UI component to test API service. Uh, looking here, uh, we have the constructor uh, inside constructor. We have the object of test service class and inside test service. We are calling this method get user and we are piping all the user information into the user variable which is of type user. So this can be explicitly defined type or interface you can say and we are subscribing to the data inside it. Once we fetch the data, uh, the fetch data becomes false. Either the request will complete or the request will throw an error. In both the cases, uh, fetch data will become false. So this is what we are doing here. And if we will go inside test service to take a look, so it's inside services. So going inside the test service, uh, here we are calling the method get users. OK. So here in test service, we have all the methods. OK, and uh, the first method is get service and uh, the get service method is having HTTP options. Now uh, HTTP option gives us uh, a power to customize our headers. OK, uh, whenever we are sending the request. So uh, with inside Fosology, we have uh, this uh, thing like authorization and uh, we want to send authorization token to our Fosology API so that uh, uh, we are uh, we are the right person to access the 
uh, the information from the Fasology API, okay, or uh, to have access to the Fasology. And this token can be generated easily from Fasology, and you can go here, you can go to edit user, okay, and you can just create a new token by giving some name, and uh, you will get some token like this, which you can use here in the code and as a bearer token and uh, that can help you connect with the uh, pass on the authorization okay and what we are doing inside this get user is that we are returning an http client uh, get request okay whatever the value we are getting from uh, the from our client and uh, we are passing on uh, the url over which we want to have access now what is this user api url so we are just taking our environment variable URL. That is what I've shown you here. So these are some default URLs you can keep into your environment. We are taking that and then we are, uh, so, sorry. Okay, we are taking that and we are updating our uh, URL with uh, users and license. Okay, and we are storing it into different variables. Then we are just generating a get request with a URL string and options, which is like optional in this case. Okay. And we are sending options and URL. And whatever is the result that we are getting, we are returning that. And to this result, here we are subscribing to it and piping the information in a right format. So that is what we are doing here. Uh, this is a little tricky, but. Uh, Understanding this is really important because when we are working with UI, we are not only going to work with just the UI, but also with the implementation of connecting the UI and API. Okay. Uh, and in fact, once we receive all these information, okay, for users, we are trying to loop through all these informations using directive for. Okay, this helps us to render the same element or the same component again and again. Okay, or the same piece of UI again and again. And here we are just to, uh, rendering it in a row and column uh, inside this. Okay, now if you will see here, we are directly trying to add, uh, we are writing some code which is not uh, uh, same that of HTML. Okay, but uh, what we are doing here is that we are trying to load a component here that is. Uh, app user card and here we are sending all the users information that we are receiving one by one and we are loading it if you will see user card you will see that we have this uh, similar structure as you can see and we are in fact receiving this users information as an input which is what we are just directly representing it here so i hope uh, this one is uh, really clear to you all and now if you want to explore license card i would like to like if you all can do it by yourselves and like uh, if it is uh, like if you can explore out how we are doing the same thing with license card it will be much more helpful to you so do we have any question till here OK, so if not, then let's go to these uh, two uh, sequence diagrams that I proposed. So it's not only with respect to Angular. Uh, I'm very sorry that it's Angular here, but uh, it uh, is going to be something similar with uh, all other uh, uh, like all other framework. OK, whether you use React or whether you use Angular, OK, or whether you use uh, BUE, CS, OK. Everywhere the architecture is going to be pretty simple. So we are going to subscribe to the REST API here uh, that is connected with the Fosology and uh, that can help us get data from the Fosology or that can help us update the database, uh, update the data into the database and uh, inside the Fosology. Uh, keeping in mind that uh, we also have a problem statement, uh, which is okay. Okay. We also have a problem statement that says APIs are not available. Okay. So in many scenarios, there might not be any API available 
And what we can do is that we need to create those APIs and expose them to our framework or whatever place we are using. So that is what we need to do. And uh, we have a little bit more about Fosology API. So I think uh, uh, I have to, uh, I just asked uh, help from Gaurav uh, to uh, help me with uh, this part of the code as uh, he is more into Fosology and uh, he could help us all to get a good deep dive idea onto this. So I'm just uh, handing over to Gaurav. Mm, yes, thank you, Vivek. Uh, so at this point, if anyone have any question with the Angular part, it would be okay to ask or uh, we can take everything at the end. Uh, how are you like? So I'm just sharing my screen. Okay, so. Uh, presentation mode. So yeah, uh, with Fosology, we uh, have a good documentation available for the whole API, you can uh, look at it uh, inside your SRC. If you go to this path or just open this link, you will be uh, presented with the YAML file, which contains all the documentation of all the API we have at the moment. Uh, sorry, uh, not the API, the endpoints. And uh, if you want to visualize it, like if it is something very new to you, uh, Swagger provides a very good UI. And we also use it for the development and testing purpose uh, sometimes. So what you need to do is just open this file, copy the YAML, go to uh, the link editor.swagger.io and paste whatever is the content of your YAML file there and it will render, uh, render the API endpoint neatly on the right. And uh, if you want, you can also click on these uh, endpoints, see what are the inputs they need, what are the outputs they get you. And uh, you can also generate some of the curl requests. Uh, you can use them to do the rest call from your command line itself, or you can use the information, whatever you see here. And uh, there is a good tool called Postman, uh, which is going to be very helpful if you are working with REST APIs. Uh, it can uh, help you to just quickly send a request, see the response, uh, how it uh, how it's happening. So moving on, uh, yeah. So sorry, as Vivek said, uh, most of the endpoints are not available at the moment. So do use this uh, documentation YAML file uh, to get the list of every endpoint what is available there. Uh, but if you find something which is not there, uh, how you are going to add it? So, so uh, Fosology uses a slim framework to do the uh, routing of the request, uh, whichever is coming from the REST endpoint. And uh, uh, as Vivek showed in his demo, uh, everything is routed from this uh, index.php file. Um, and uh, so in the middle, this is the content of the file. So if you see everything uh, is neatly stacked into different endpoints uh, and every request inside them is clubbed together as a group. So if you want to understand how it works, uh, I would recommend go to Slim Frameworks documentation and check the version 3, uh, which we currently use. But uh, just as an overview, so these uh, are your path. If, uh, I, I hope you guys can see my mouse pointer. Or do we have something here? Ah. So uh, these are your uh, the path, whatever is coming as a request uh, at, at whichever endpoint you are hitting. And then uh, so in, in the demo, uh, we were using the user's endpoint. So any request 
will come to this group and then you have a regex uh, so slash it can take any integer which will be called as a id inside the php code or this is optional uh, it's put into this neat um, square bracket and it it will manage only your get request so similarly we have a delete uh, so for deleting something you need a specific uh, id so you don't see the square bracket here and uh, how this thing relates to the code uh, on the right you have to tell it the class uh, which is going to handle this request and then colon and the name of the function inside that particular class who, uh, which is handling this request uh, so all the things you see are called as controller here or controller or upload controller or user controller so we have this uh, structure in the code uh, where you have a folder called controllers it contains every uh, controller for every endpoint you have seen so far and then you have uh, some helper functions which are like your utilities whichever is common between different controllers uh, it's, it it is helpful to put it there in the helper and then you get some models so whatever is a response you receive uh, is of a specific structure so that structure is maintained under the models uh, and of course you have this documentation folder which contains this uh, yaml file and then you have something called as a middleware so it is a very simple concept but necessary to understand if you are going to uh, make some changes like changing the authentication method or uh, enabling or disabling course so uh, this is a diagram from the slim uh, so whatever request comes in you can think of it uh, like this square as your php runtime and whatever request is coming in will pass first through this gray circle which is your middleware 2 and then it will go to middleware one the inner circle and then it will be executed by your particular uh, code and while exiting you will exit first via middleware one and middleware two so it uh, acts like a shell uh, so not to worry i'll explain a bit more how it is used here so this is the section inside your index.php where we are using two uh, middlewares one is to initialize all the phosology related things and uh, one is to do the authentication for every request so i'll just exit from here and uh, maybe so this uh, index file is i believe pretty clear let me zoom, zoom in a bit uh so this starts with some uh with some of these uh, initialization of different variables then you bootstrap the phosology code and then you start your slim container and then here comes your middleware so whatever request is coming will first uh, uh, is also documented here so it first enters uh, the rest auth because this is our middleware too and if you remember from slide uh, whatever middleware you add later is the outermost shell so it first goes through rest middleware and if everything is good then it goes through uh, the phosology initializer middleware yeah then whatever is uh, the request pointing to that particular controller will be called and uh, as the response comes it first uh, goes through the initializing uh, middleware again so just to destroy every php object we have and uh, it enters the rest middleware where we simply uh, bypass it so to look into this middleware uh, we'll start with the rest uh, rest auth middleware so uh, it will be under the middlewares folder 
and from the rest of middleware you will find this uh, invoke method which takes a request uh, have a response object and the next object so uh, we start by looking into the request uh, what is the particular endpoint being called so fossology also allows you to generate tokens from the rest api itself so those particular calls where you are generating a token you can't do a authentication based on a token so we just uh, check that here and uh, over here so those requests we don't validate uh, we directly send it to the controller uh, and let the controller take care of it and then uh, there is also a version endpoint which uh, simply tells you which particular version of the rest api is exposed at the moment so that also does not require any uh, authentication and uh, for everything else you come over here and uh, this is the uh, the authentication mechanism so it checks your jwt token uh, whether it contains the correct scope or not if everything is good like uh, if some group is required uh, and and different stuff so whenever everything is good like uh, till here token is valid for us and uh, user has the access to it and everything is nice and good for me so we pass it on to the next uh, whatever the next thing might be it can be a middleware or it can be a controller and then we simply return that particular response uh, then comes your fossology in it middleware so at the moment you don't need to worry much about it uh, so all it does is uh, Fossology uses this dependency injection technique. So it sets up a container, uh, do some initializing uh, initialization work, and then it calls the next uh, thing. So from here it goes to the controller, and whenever it returns, it just destroys everything and uh, returns the response. So. Uh, so as you know from the demo itself you need to hack this uh, rest auth middleware so you can handle the options and uh, options requests so they don't also need authentication you just need a simple response for them uh, if anything i'm missing yeah uh, let's look at the some of the models uh, for example how they are maintained. So, if uh, let's say you are looking at, uh, you want to fetch some license information. So, uh, it is stored as a PHP object, or sorry, uh, it's used as a PHP object, and uh, there are various benefits you get. You can call different functions uh, on top of it. So, for every model you can expect a constructor uh, various getters and setters uh, which is a very basic concept in any uh, object oriented programming language and then there is one special function or two uh, one is called as get json and one is called as get array so uh, what get array does is to convert this uh, PHP object into a simple PHP associative array uh, and give it like the index. So if, uh, if I show you the endpoint here, uh, where is it? Slash. Oops. Going to work. Oh, uh, it's. Uh, is the old version of the UI. So let's uh, have a look at the users then. So this is the expected JSON object uh, you want from the REST API. So whatever key and a value you have uh, that is replicated over here. And then 
the get json function simply takes this array and pass it through json encoder and whenever whenever some uh, controller is responding to something uh, it will call this get json on this particular uh, model for the response then yeah rest of the things are pretty simple you can explore them how controllers work uh, helper are nothing but some internal fosology uh, functions they are called uh, with different ways uh, one more thing you need to take care if you are uh, modifying these endpoints is uh, the dependency uh, injection container so it is located under src lib php service xml dot in and if you scroll down you will find every object which fosology uses so there will be some objects from the rest api as well so they are listed here so uh, you will only need it if you are doing something in the helper uh, for everything else uh, slim takes takes care of it creating uh, the object but for the helper you need to if if you are modifying of course you need to uh, put it over here uh, so yeah i think i have covered everything um, in terms of the rest api and how possibly uses it so if you have any questions uh, you can ask otherwise i'll hand over to you right now oh uh, i think we have next slide as uh, q and a only so can be so any question can be taken care here like any basic doubt or any planning or question or any technical question any non technical question anything related to this project or you can hi sir i am having one question Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, sir, I am having this question. Like, uh, basically, what are the primarily UI pages with which we are going to work? And as Vivek sir told us that some of the APIs are also broken. So, like, currently the license and users API is working on the front end. So, what are the rest APIs like? What are the other APIs which we are going to work on? Okay. So, at the moment, the rest api what fosology uses is uh, on need basis so whichever endpoint is being used we just create it like if someone requests for it so i think most of the endpoints which you guys are going to need will uh, have to be created and uh, for the question what uh ui pages we want to migrate is uh, if i answer it it would be whatever can be done during this this of period so the major focus would be on uh, the static pages uh, there are various kind of pages in fosology so some of some of them are static which uh, don't change very often uh those would be the first uh, low hanging fruits to start with and then as uh, the project progress yeah will move uh, gradually towards the more complex uh, ui pages okay so uh, sir is we uh, is there is any mock for that ui pages or we have to prepare it that like mock ui how we going to uh, transfer okay so that uh, the design if you are asking is up to you uh, however you would like to propose it okay okay sir thank you oh uh, yes aman um yes hello everyone so i have some queries regarding the ui so can i share my screen uh, yes of course yes so just sharing my screen yeah so is my screen visible to you all mm, yeah it's loading something oh so um, stop again okay 
Okay. So yes, is it visible now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, I have some queries that uh, this was the design proposed by uh, Sahil uh, that of the UI mockup. So this is a side. He proposed a sidebar that here we can have this sidebar where we can have different components. And so regarding that, I have implemented this high fidelity wireframe into an HTML CSS code. So this is my code. So I was uh, just curious to know that whether a sidebar like this would look good or something more standard like a, a nav bar like which we cut which which is the current implementation that would look good also i have created this page uh in angular js uh, sorry in angular so it is running here and this is the ui which i have created now uh, in angular so this is the actual home page which will first uh, come here and then uh, as we can see home page is active then we can go to the browse page here it was loading and then it loads exactly the same data uh, from calling from the uh, backend api service which is the current we can also see here that this has fetched the complete data from the backend server and we can also see that it is the exact same data available here so uh, I also here i'm using angular table tables which is built on the top of angular uh, which is on top of data tables which we are currently using the jquery version so it is built on top of that and this now browse page is active also here if we go in different sections like jobs and go uh, but yes first thing here uh, that in this page if we see the current page here we can see that there are many things available upload name and description status comment mail license assigned to etc but in the rest api which is available only things like upload name description and upload date was available we have an open issue for assigned to and a linked pull request for that also but things like main license comment and status is also not available i have here in the code just added a fallback for open so also in the job section if we go in my recent jobs it will fetch all the jobs from the database and then display it here so just wanted your feedback and uh, how to do and which would be better a sidebar or a nav bar <laughs> i would just like to point i'm very impressed with your implementation uh, and of yeah, course we too. have sahil here <laughs> uh, yep thanks thank you uh, sahil would you like to uh, answer some of the queries which aman has I uh, yes, that that uh, sidebar or the navbar thing is up for discussion. It was not uh, decided last year as well, so we can experiment about that. And what were the other questions? Like it, as you mentioned, these are not completed yet. So yes. the answer to that is we have to complete them first. Then we can only use it. Uh, UI. The rest it looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I think in some applications. Or... Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. I think in some application it can be even configured by the user whether you would like to have it left-handed or as a top menu bar. More like customizable themes, like you know, yeah, yeah. The side or the yeah. top or bottom. Yeah, so it's also mobile friendly. I was trying to make so just as the current implementation is also not very much mobile friendly as we have to scroll. So yes, we can do that. About mobile friendly, I don't think there's a larger use case or anyone will be uploading licenses from their mobile. But yeah, it's good to have. But uh, but having a, re a responsive one. Uh makes uh, yep. the uh, website uh, upper, gives the website uh, or the tool an upper hand because it can adjust with multiple screens or different types of screens yep cut first it looks pretty neat to me yes thank you so any other feedback or suggestion upon this design or improvement about design, we can sit later and uh, plan all the nitty gritty things. But for a wireframe, this is pretty good. Uh, for design, like we had 
planned something like we will design something and we will release it in the community get feedback and then iterate over it so uh, one more thing uh, aman i would like to ask you like uh, you have added uh, apis as well or like uh, these are the already existing api no these are the already existing api i am uh, calling those here so in the core interface uh, in the services so i'm just calling those services on the i'm using all the current uh, existing apis one i have not modified any one right now okay so all this information which is not available i have just skipped that okay but yes the api will need to be modified mm-hmm. uh, just i have done this basic thing of here that i have just document pushed my code to github and have just documented currently it's private all the steps like what like as you mentioned that there are some cause issue so we can simply add a small function there in the index.php file api1 so which will handle the cause and then we have to run the backend generator token and in this one file we can in the environments we can save that token and rest uh, everything is fine with the installation then so just these three step are for pre installation and rest then simply npm install will work okay then uh, like this is really impressive yes thank you so we have any other questions or doubts Personally, I, I found this presentation very well. So thank you very much, actually, for um, very well done. Thank you very much for for providing it. Mm-hmm.